This build was made possible by Athletic Greens. Ebony and Ivory? Eh, I think we can do better. How about Macassar Ebony and hand-blown, flamed work, borosilicate glass? Now we're talking. Let's begin with the latter. For advertiser friendliness purposes and in efforts of keeping it PG-ish, these will be referred to as ceremonial glass flutes of the Canadian Pygmy tribe. Pretty fancy, eh? They're hand-blown by Mark at Lamy Glass and wrapped by Helio Ascari in his signature leather cording. In the spirit of collaboration with these incredible artisans, I'm building one dope little ebony stash box. If you missed the first installment of this series where Mark made some custom glass poles, be sure to check that out once you're done here. In the last iteration, I touched on the pursuit of craft and how it morphs into the pursuit of design. So let's talk a little about this design. I've designed and discarded, it must be 10 or more drafts of this box over the last year, just waiting for the right one to strike. Three artists from one city, Portland, Oregon, the city of bridges. Let's take it from there and I'll explain more as we get into this healthy dose of dovetails, hand tools, and sawdust. And speaking of healthy doses, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. I've been wanting to take my health more seriously, but with how busy life has become, it's hard to remember all the amino this and vitamin that's that I need to take every day. That's why Athletic Greens daily supplement of 75 vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens has me really stoked. It's a convenient routine everyday use like me can remember, and it tastes pretty good. As I rounded over the big 3-0, I felt this perpetual tiredness old people always talk about. More energy means more output. The biggest problem for me is digestion. Indigestion, reflux, it keeps me up most nights. AG1 by Athletic Greens has significantly improved my quality of sleep. Now, if only I could do the same thing for my wife snoring. Just kidding, babe, sort of, I love you. Get your greens. Go to athleticgreens.com slash design to get started on your order. Athletic Greens wants to give you all a free one-year supply of immune support vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Athletic Greens as in the color.com slash Sawyer Design. Thanks, Athletic Greens. All right, first things first, let's get this old orm broken down and we can get the bend in the bag and then we'll move on to the box. Orm, bend, bag, box, go. Wood can be bent in a multitude of ways. The one that I prefer is called bent lamination, where thin strips of wood are formed over a form. The part about this technique that I really don't like is the amount of waste from this nasty MDF. So whenever possible, I like to reuse the forms. Eventually, I'll get set up to do some steam bending. Until then, this is the way. tune on one of them and that's used as a template to transfer to the rest. Now, all vacuum pumps suck the same amount. It's just a matter of how fast they evacuate the air. The amount they suck though is insane. 1,700 pounds per square foot. That means the bag sees 54,000 pounds of pressure. For context, that would be the equivalent clamping pressure of stacking two Peterbilt dump trucks on top and perfectly distributing the weight. Hence the beefy structure support here. I'm gonna do Baltic for the core on the box and we will get there first. Let's bend some wood. I don't recommend using a track saw on your Rubo, but I'm out of room, so this will have to do. It'll take maybe 30 minutes to dry. Uh, I'm just keeping them flat while they do so.
Dinner time. Let's get this, not Madagascar, Mag uh, Magasker? Hang on, it'll come. Macassar, Ebony, got it. Unwrapped and get started making the box. Cool, let's do it. One question I get a lot that I don't necessarily agree with is how I get so much stuff done. And that is an easy answer, two things, Adderall and Psytrance. If you just do one side, it adds moisture and tension to one side of the panel where it doesn't the other and it'll cut. So both sides need to be veneered. I could do it in Macassar, but what I think might look cool is to do the inside in oak and then it'll show up as sort of a fine pinstripe around the drawer. But first we need to cut the border that will sit in the core and while we're at it, we might as well cut the drawer parts down to size. Take a minute for that panel to dry. Uh, probably leave it in the clamps for about a half hour. Let's get this bent thing out of the form and start cleaning that up. Yep, it's time for my favorite part. I feel like if nothing else, we have to do this for tradition now. Ooh, hang on one sec. Mike, Mike, check. My buddy Nelson, uh, who's been helping me figure out all of this video stuff, brought over his fancy audio equipment. 3D the 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 stereo. stereo. I don't know if that's true. Immersion. 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 This, this opening, opening experience is some little uh, May ASMR. I don't know how to ASMR. Are you ready? Wait for it. I said, um, are you ready? I'm ready. Why does he always hype this up so much? Let's just get this over with. In case you ever wondered why I don't use uh, regular wood glue very often for bins. That's why. It takes a really long time to dry. Nasty. I'm gonna let this goop degoopify and solidify and grab a lunch and I'll see you in a minute. Eggs. That's what I have for lunch in case you were wondering. Let's get this cleaned up. I just love like what that curve on the curve does to the form. Just makes it so much more interesting. What do you think? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I, uh, I dig it. Scrambled, not fried. I'm gonna get this panel out and actually, why don't we get this veneered and that sounds like a good game plan. Sound good to you? Cool. Have I mentioned lately that a uh, drum sander would be nice? Just in case I hadn't today. All right, that veneer glue sets up pretty quick. So let's get this uh, panel out and we can make the box. And there you have it, one finely crafted veneered panel. But a panel a box makes not. So let's get the edges cleaned up and cut some miters. 
It might be because I'm lazy. It might be my aversion to changing table saw blades, but I prefer to cut miters on the router table. Much cleaner. when to do what and why. How not to paint yourself into a corner. It sounds pretty simple, but it gets me every time. We've got to glue it and assemble it, but before I do that, I need a drawer stop. Before I get the drawer or the case together, in case you were wondering when this comes into play, I'm gonna get this fit to the case. We can talk about how this is gonna happen, but you know me, I'm a little goofy with words. I'm just gonna show you what we're doing here. Once removing the tape, I realized I'm gonna need to do something about that glue line that uh, got ripped open by the bag. Always something. <laughs> All right, I think I've got this laid out where I want it for the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and get a drawer stop installed. That'll be the last thing in the case. Oh, someone's mom's backing up. Just kidding, it's probably your girlfriend. And I think I'm done inside the case. We can glue up the case. While that dries, we'll build the drawer and then final assembly and I think we're good to go. You'll have to forgive my cuticles, but how sweet are these little drawer snaps? Those will keep the drawer from falling out too far. I was originally going to veneer a back panel for it, and I'm still gonna veneer it, and, and it's gonna be solid wood, so it's gonna need room to expand and contract. So I need to actually slice off some of this bottom panel to allow it to slide up in. It gets a little dicey. With all this time in one panel, Mistakes now are devastating. See, the way the front profile on the front of the box curves means this has to be a very particular angle. A small mistake here could mess up the profile for the whole box and I'd have to start from the beginning. I think that's all of the to-dos on the inside, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, taped up one more time. We'll get it glued together, and while I do that, let's get some dovetails cut. I don't know about you, but dovetails really blow my hair back. Even though I've only been doing this for a few years, there's one question I get repeatedly on social media. If you aren't already, follow me on Instagram. And that is about dovetail layout. For some reason, when you first start out, that step is just absolutely perplexing. And I'm here to tell you, the tails don't matter. This is your template. They can look like gummy bears for all I care. As long as the sides are square to the face, you're good to go. That's enough of that. I don't know how you 80s people stood a whole decade of that.
just a little chunk right there. And I totally forgot about dados and stupid through dovetails. We'll have to fill that. Not a big deal. It's walnut, it'll turn black. You'll never see it. Magic. All right, just gotta get the back of the drawers and the bottom done. The slant on the front of the drawers added a considerable amount of difficulty. So with the back, it's all downhill from here. If you're wondering why we did saber tooth tiger tails up here, because I'm gonna take the profile of the front of the case out of that edge. So these will actually get quite a bit smaller. All right, well those cook, let's move back to the case and get the hoop fit to the box. If you were paying attention, this is where you might realize I forgot something. We need to do something about that glue line gap. Inlay on a curved surface just sounds like a big old pain in the butt, so I just decided to cut it in half and glue it back together. It works. Why I say design is the next iteration is, is because as soon as you start getting super funky with design, then execution comes back and, and it all gets hard again. And that's kind of what I'm after. I'm not saying this is the most difficult stuff in the world, but the bigger the struggle, the bigger the reward. So we're all woodworkers masochists? Maybe. So how do you come up with a design? I mean, there's not, there probably is a handbook. It's so nuanced. The smallest thing can generate the spark that ignites a fire. And I don't think there's any hard and fast rules. I like to look for associations, for commonalities, differences, something that stands out and stands apart. Maybe for example, a city and a city that's known for bridges. Starting to see those bridgey vibes I'm going for? If not, don't worry because this is a muscle, and like all muscles, they must be used to grow stronger. drawer dries, this back panel slips into place here the other way. And then the trim piece we ripped off the bottom gives that continuous oak border all the way around. But, oh no. but as we put that border on, it leaves a little gap. Even though it's the bottom at the back, yeah, I don't like that. So I'm gonna fix it. Once the drawer's dry, that little gap that I left from the drawer bottom in the dovetails, I'll put a little block in there. We'll get this piston fit and get the drawer pull on and then pre-finish and we're good to go. Home stretch.
let's get this drawer piston fit. that very inside edge by breaking that over as well. Just a little bit of tear out from the blade. People always ask me why I have so many hand planes. I just keep all of my block planes set at a different cut. So like my big block plane is always set for a pretty hefty cut. This guy is sharpened at a super high angle, so it's less likely to tear out. And then I usually put a super duper fine cut on this one. So while I use a lot of CA glue, I, especially where this is supporting glass, CA glue holds strong, but is very brittle. So it'll snap any like side force. If you just come in and bump these, they'll pop right out. So I, so I thought it wise to uh, reinforce these with some screws. Everyone, I just wanna say a quick thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you think I've earned it, please do hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notified when we release upcoming projects like the shark dresser, the Rubo that's gonna piss off old people that I'm just excited to share with you. For right now, let's uh, go ahead and check out that B-roll and see how this thing came together. I hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you on the next build. Peace. A box of three artists who got their start in the city of Bridges. Stay tuned till the very end after this B-roll, I've got a sneak peek of the very bridgey Rubo workbench I'll be working on next month. again for watching go back and check that out you might also really like the axle and shadow bent laminated sculpture now check this now you've heard of a split top rubo this is a split top sawyer let me know down in the comments below whether you think this should be split top or solid top catch you next time